All right. Welcome, 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 everyone. Thanks for joining us today on another episode of Extreme Health Radio. In fact, this is going to be episode 557. So if you guys want to check out any of the notes or anything that we talk about on today's show, you can check out ExtremeHealthRadio.com. All you got to do is remember uh, 557. So it's ExtremeHealthRadio.com slash 557. Today, we're going to talk about lung health. And um, I just want to let sort of preface this off the bat that I am not a doctor. And I'm just a health researcher, a health motivator. I uh, just look into these things, and I would encourage all of you guys to do more research and uh, check out if any of the things that I'm talking about are correct or if they're incorrect or uh, anything like that. So make sure to do your own research, check with your doctor, all of that good stuff. So I'm just a researcher, and I'm going to share some of the results of uh, some of the research I've been doing lately in regards to lung health. And... Um, Lots of interesting. I want to tell you guys about how it came up for me. Uh, my mom was asking about lung health because she she's had her bout of lung issues lately. Um, not just lately, but for the last 20 years, I'd say. Many of you guys know that I got into alternative health, natural healing, and all that good stuff through my mom's issue uh, with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma back in 1995. And uh, back then, we knew nothing. So she went through the conventional treatments, and oddly enough... It worked for her. She did chemotherapy. She did radiation, <laughs> bone marrow transplant. It was a nightmare for our family. And But she is still alive, and she's still doing great. And she was asking me all kinds of questions lately about lung health. So um, I started doing some research. I started learning some things. And uh, so I want to share some of that research with you guys today. Um, again, if you guys want to check out the show notes for today's show, it is extremehealthradio.com slash 557. And is that correct? Let me make sure that's correct here. I think it's 557 because 556 was Dr. John Bergman in our studio. Let me make sure that's correct. Yep, 557. So if you guys want to check out the show notes, you can go and check out that page. Uh, I've been doing a lot of research um, on lung health. And you might be listening to this thinking, you know what? I'm young. I'm healthy. I don't need to have any... I don't need to worry about my lungs. But um, lung cancer is the leading cancer killer in both men and women. So... Um, it's very, very important to take care of our lungs, make sure that we can breathe correctly. Uh, it says here in 1987, it surpassed breast cancer to become the leading cause of death in women, which is crazy. It says here an estimated 158,000 uh, Americans are expected to die from lung cancer in 2016. 158,000 lives that either... Our, you know, grandparents or parents that aren't going to be around for their kids, or maybe it's, uh, you know, people that are going to become parents that aren't going to be able to have kids as a result of this. Um, and so this is going to account for approximately, it says here, 27% of all cancer deaths. So it's a big deal. Lung cancer and keeping healthy lungs is a huge, huge deal. So I want to talk about some ideas uh, in today's show. And um, as you guys know, I, I try to hit everything on, on every level I possibly can. So we do, um, everything from emotional, spiritual to energetic work to herbs to, um, essential oils to what else? Uh, different devices, breathing, you know, techniques you can use. And so the emotional, spiritual, physical, all these different levels I'm going to try to hit on in today's show about lung health. So if you guys know of, of anybody who have lung issues or <clears throat> lung cancer, lung, infections, viruses, uh, poor breathing, you know, you may want to let them know about this show and pass it on to them because um, it might open their their eyes to some more options out there um, that they're currently being told about um, from their doctors. And so I no means want to override any doctors out there or anything like that, but I'm just bringing up some research that I've been able to do that might help you out with your lungs. And then you can go, uh, the whole point of this show is to uh, make people aware, uh, make you guys and myself aware of options, and then we can go ahead and research those options. And um, part of the power of understanding um, natural health and natural healing is understanding there are options. And so uh, one of the first things I want to say in terms of lung cancer or lung diseases or anything like that, you have no issues with your lungs. I want to make that clear. Um, you, your a body, you don't have cancer. You don't have any disease because I want to understand. I want to make sure that we all understand this uh, from the get go. Is that um, none of us have any diseases. Our bodies do, and it's really, really important on an emotional, spiritual level to understand that we are not our bodies. And we hear this all the time. 
but the doctors will say, you have lung cancer, you have this disease, you have that disease. I just want to really hit home the idea that um, we are not our bodies. We're simply spiritual beings having a physical experience in this particular body. So uh, it's important to understand that there's a difference between us and our bodies. And so when we can tap in to our spiritual side, that's where all the power lies. But once we uh, engage with and pretend and think that we are our bodies, um, and then once our bodies break down, then the fear overrides us. So it's really important to make that distinction first and foremost. That way it eliminates the fear um, of any of being diagnosed with something, right? So, um, okay, so I want to share with you some ideas. Let's see here. I brought up a ton of research, and um, let's see here. It says here that... Um, Dry air, so just the components of our air. I'm going to share with you guys some stats. It's about 78.09% nitrogen, 20.95% oxygen, 0.93% argon, and 0.04% carbon dioxide and small amounts of other gases. So air also contains a variable amount of water vapor, things like that. Um, so that's important to keep note of. And an average around 1% at, le- at sea level and 0.4% over the entire atmosphere. And studies have found that levels of several several organics average two to five times higher indoors than outdoors. So during and for several hours immediately after certain activities, such as paint stripping, uh, the levels of toxicity indoors may be 1,000 times the background outdoor levels. So it's really important to understand that we're being exposed to chemicals, uh, whether it's formaldehyde in our mattresses, um, flame retardants in our mattresses, chemicals in our carpets, benzene. We did a whole show on benzene, um, and, and particle board and, uh, and paints and all this stuff is outgassing in our, in, inside our house. So, um, but with all that said, the biggest cause of lung cancers obviously is smoking. And so it says here that in the U.S. alone, there are an estimated 26.2 million men, 23.5%. And 20.9 million women who smoke. And these people are obviously at increased risk for lung, breast, throat, stomach, and other types of cancers, as well as heart attacks, strokes, emphysema, asthma, and uh, other diseases like that. So a person who smokes is more, uh, more than one pack of cigarettes a day has 20 to 25 times greater risk of developing lung cancer than someone who has never smoked. I should say, see, these things, a person who smokes... Um, it's a body that smokes, not a living spiritual being, right? So it's the body of a person that smokes. So the person uh, never can get skin cancer or any kind of cancer, actually. So here's some more interesting statistics, and then I'm going to get into some practical solutions for you here and some things and ideas you can explore uh, further about how to take care of your lungs, right? Um, let's see. It says here about 90% or most people spend about 90% of their time indoors, and I'm indoors now recording this. Um, so what I've been trying to do is to spend more time outdoors. Um, so this obviously impacts lung health way more than outdoor air. So indoor air may have a toxic chemical concentrations of up to 100 times higher than outdoor air. That's crazy, right? That's nuts. Um, over 35 million people in the U.S. alone have some form of chronic lung disease. 50% of all illnesses, according to the American College of Allergies, is caused or aggravated by indoor air pollution. That's crazy, right? 50% of all illnesses caused or aggravated by indoor air pollution. That's nuts. That's the last place people look, right? Um, a, two, a 2007 report here uh, stated that scientists found a direct correlation between depression and a high con- concentration of mold in households. Pretty crazy, right? Scientific America warns that having that a baby crawling on a normal floor, now this is nuts, inhales the equivalent of four cigarettes a day from outgassing of carpets, dust mites, molds, mildew, fungi, and other toxic chemicals. That's nuts, right? And it says here, according to the EPA, six out of 10 homes and buildings are, quote, sick and hazardous to overall health uh, due to airborne pollutants. Six out of 10 homes and buildings. And it says here that over 1,000 types of mold and mildew have been identified in homes located in the United States. 1,000 different types of just mold and mildew. And those are just two of probably hundreds of toxins that we have inside our house. 
And of those two, there's a thousand different types. So it's really, really a complex problem that we have going on here in terms of our lung health. And uh, allergen levels in super insulated homes are 200% higher. So if you have a super insulated home, um, it says here allergen levels are are 200% higher than in ordinary homes. Um, and over 6 million people in America are allergic to the pets in their homes. Say it isn't so, right? That's nuts. I love our dogs. I hope I'm not allergic to them. I don't feel like I am, but maybe maybe I should get <laughs> maybe I should get tested. That says six six million people in America are allergic to their pets. So those are some statistics, right? We all know that there's issues with indoor air pollution, toxins and chemicals, and these types of things inside our home. And so the obvious solution, um, the cheapest solution, would be just to spend more time outside. Simply go outside more often and sp- and try to do your work out there. What I do is I go outside. I I eat my breakfast. I try to eat my dinner. I try to just be outside. Think back to when you were a child. Look at how much time you spent outside versus now as an adult, right? You think about you sleep for eight hours and then you spend a bunch of time in the morning getting ready for work. Then you get uh and go in your garage, get in your car. Get out of your car when you get to work. Go inside a building. Maybe you go out of the building outside for lunch. But then you come back in your building and then you work, drive home. I mean, it's it's pretty incredible how much time we spend indoors. And the simplest solution is to simply spend more time outdoor. But I'm going to talk with you guys about some protection for indoor air pollution. I'm going to share with you three ideas that uh, might be of some benefit for you. I'm going to talk about uh, some internal remedies for your lungs. Uh, 15 different herbs, 10 different foods, um, things like that that might be able to help you out. And let's see what else here. And 10 different foods that are super, super high in beta carotene, which are incredible for the lungs. I'm also going to share with you four different devices that you might want to look at that could help improve your lung function and lung capacity. Um, and then five different lifestyle practices that uh, that might be able to help you um, cleanse your lungs as well as uh, lifestyle factors and emotional spiritual side to all of this as well. So, man, it really, really uh, affects me when um, when lung cancer is such a rising cancer in people. And um, you know, taking good care of your lungs is super, super important. So, let's talk first of all. You know, in terms of lung health, one of the things we have to do is. Uh, before we do anything, the first step is to understand uh, the dangers of indoor air pollution and the importance of keeping healthy lungs, right? That's the first point. Uh, the second, actually the first, the first, um, what would I say? What, what would be a good way to describe this? The first realization, I should say, that we should have is is the desire to want to take care of ourselves. And that comes from a self-worth issue. That's a spiritual issue. Um Wanting to put in the effort to take care of yourself. That's a spiritual issue. Uh, the second realization and um, thing to understand is that there are problems with indoor air pollution, right? So now we've got the desire to help ourselves and now we have the understanding that indoor air pollution is really, really toxic and hazardous to our health. Um, so then after that, let's talk about some protection, some things you can do. Okay, there's quite a few things. The first thing you can do is simply open your windows uh, of your house. And the second thing you can do is look to slowly but surely remove those things inside your house that are off-gassing. So that means paints. Um, if you have to repaint the inside of your house with organic paint, that might be a consideration. I know a lot of these things may not be practical because you know that could cost a lot of money. That could cost thousands of dollars. But they're considerations. Uh, removing your carpet. Um, getting an organic bed uh, would be highly, highly in organic sheets and making sure that um, all the different chemicals and cleaning products and things like that that are inside your house are organic. Um, that's the first step, right? Um, so let's talk about some things you can do inside your house. And that is simply to get some plants. And let me share with you some plants that might be able to help you. So there's a really good quote by uh, Dr. Meredith McCormack from the John Hopkins, I can say that right, John Hopkins School of Medicine. She says here that uh, they found that, um, it says here, quote, we found that substantial increases in asthma symptoms were associated both with higher indoor uh, concentrations of fine particles and with higher indoor concentrations of coarse particles. So what are some things that you can do? So there's some plants that you could get. Uh, one of them is uh, the bamboo plant. 
that helps to remove formaldehyde and is also uh, said to act as like a natural humidifier. So the bamboo plant would be something that you could get. Uh, there's something also called the snake plant, and that uh, helps to absorb nitrogen oxides and formaldehyde, the snake plant. Uh, the other one is, uh, number three, is the Erica palm, E-R-E-C-A palm, one of the best air purifying plants for general air cleanliness. Uh, number four is the spider plant. So that's great for indoor plant uh, for removing carbon monoxide and other toxins or impurities. And uh, they're one of three plants NASA deems best at removing formaldehyde in the air. That's the spider plant. Uh, the peace lily, um, they could be called the clean all of all plants. They're often placed in bathrooms or laundry rooms because uh, they're known for removing mold spores. Um, and they're also known to remove formaldehyde and Gosh, what do you say? This tri trichloethylene. So the peace lily is another one. Um, the ger- gerbera, G E R B E R A, gerbera, or gerbera daisy. Um, not only do these flowers remove benzene from there, uh, they're known to improve sleep by absorbing carbon dioxide and giving off more oxygen over nighttime. So those are some ideas. Um, some other ones that I didn't mention here are um, I, I mentioned the Erica palm. Um, the ficus alley removes toxins to purify the air. The lady palm uh, improves indoor air quality. The Drachania Janet Gregg removes that same chemical, trichloroethylene, I think it's called. Um, the dwarf date palm removes indoor air pollutants and most particularly xylene. Um, the Boston fern. Uh, removes many different types of air, uh, indoor air pollutants, um, most like mostly formaldehyde. Uh, the peace lily I already mentioned. And so there's a lot of different things you can do with plants. So I would recommend, if you can, get some of these plants. I'll put a link to this in the show notes, but get some of these plants and start putting them around your house. Uh, that would be a really, really good way to, uh, to start purifying the air. Now, the next thing to think about is buying an air purifier. And I would highly, highly recommend getting an air purifier for your home, for your office, for your baby's room, for your bedroom. If you have a home office, you can put it in there. Um, We recommend the Air Doctor Pro, and that is uh, in our store. That is, um, it outperforms, according to my research, um, the Austin Air Purifier, which is the one that we recently, uh, most recently were promoting. But this is much, much better. So you might want to take a look at the videos that we have in our store at the Air Doctor Pro. Pretty compelling. So make sure to get an air purifier. And this one is an interesting thing I saw on Kickstarter that I think you guys might need to be or sh- should be aware of. It's an interesting portable air uh, solution. It's called the Inversion Air Pollution Gator, G-A-I-T-E-R 2.0. And it's basically like a a mask that you can put over your lungs. And this would be pretty interesting to wear uh, if you go on you know, trips on the plane or if you're working in an environment. It basically looks like a like a mask that you would wear um like uh like like in a hospital or something. But um this has an air purifier attached to it. It's pretty interesting uh product. We have no affiliation with this product or anything like that. But what I'll do is I will put a link to it to their Kickstarter and you might be able to check it out and um get some Get some ways to purify, you know, because if you're traveling, that would be a great thing to have while you're traveling. Um, so those are some ideas for for protecting yourself um, and creating cleaner air inside your home. Um, super, super important. Now, let's talk a little bit about some internal remedies, some herbs, some foods and things like that and vitamins. Um, vitamin E, tocopherol is, uh, I believe that's how you say it. Vitamin E really is incredible for the lungs. Many of our past guests have talked about that. And uh, people that live in polluted environments um, are are taking high doses of vitamin E. So you may want to look at that and look at uh, if that's something that you might want to look at. Vitamin E for the lungs. Also, a homeopathic biotherapeutic drainage. And you might want to look at homeopathics because there's some really powerful things you can do for the lungs on a homeopathic level. Oh, and one thing I failed to mention, um, I should have mentioned this at the beginning. Here's some stats here about... Um, the United States and toxicity, and this would probably goes for any Western nation or any, any real nation around the planet. Um, it says here the total pounds of toxic chemicals released into the environment by state in 2016. This is nuts. I'll just read you the beginning or the, um, 
number one, which is the worst, uh, the amount of toxicity released into the environment by state. Number one, what state would you guess if you had to guess? I've heard that Texas was the highest, but in fact, it says here uh, it's Alaska, 834 million pounds of toxicity released into the environment every single year. <sighs> Man, I live in California, Kate and I do, and let's see, where's that on the list? That's number 21. California is 45,400,000 pounds of toxins released into the environment each year. New Hampshire, oddly enough, is the, is the uh, cleanest state in terms of the amount of toxicity in, in pounds released into the environment each year at 290,000. So if you look at Alaska, that's 834 million versus New Hampshire, 290,000. So it's pretty, pretty distinct difference there. So, you know, we're being bombarded with toxicities and chemicals and all kinds of stuff. So, uh, it is really, really important to make sure that you keep on track of your lungs and, you know, keep your lungs healthy. Um, all right. So let's talk about some herbs. Um, mullen comes up as the top herb. Um, now mullen is, you know, constantly comes up because it's, it's used by, you know, traditions around the world to, you know, combat colds, uh, bronchitis, flu, emphysema, laryngitis, and things like that. Um, but it's been found by herbal experts to contain saponines that soothe bronchial spasms and clear, clears out sticky phlegm and thick mucus. So mullen is something to consider. Oregano uh, is also something, and it contains a substance called carvacol and rosmarinic acid, compounds that act to reduce histamine and help airflow through the nasal passes. So you might want to look at oregano. Uh, peppermint or peppermint oil, and that's the menthol that's found in peppermint, helps to relax the respiratory tract muscles. So that helps to ease breathing difficulties. So you may want to check out peppermint or peppermint oil as an essential oil and maybe um, put that in a diffuser diffuser in your room or something like that. Uh, lungwort has very strong antioxidant properties. And studies have found that compared to 20 different herbal extracts, lungwort tested among the highest for its antioxidant abilities. Its acids have been said to be extremely effective in protecting the lungs and aiding in proper chest function. So you may want to check out lungwort. Uh, eucalyptus, um, several cu cultures have enjoyed... The health of eucalyptus benefits throughout the decades and uh, millennia. Um, due to its ability to reduce throat irritation, it helps to open sinus passages, uh, helps to relieve congestion. Um, and one of the compounds in it is called, uh, gosh, it's hard to pronounce this, C-I-N-E-O-L-E, -E. Sinoli, is responsible for uh, a lot of these traits. And another one is Irish moss. And... Um, that's something that it's an amazing herb and um, it's it's sort of believed to be capable of treating um, tons of different respiratory illnesses. Um, and it's one of the core uh, ingredients, in fact, of many prescription drugs used to treat bronchitis, coughs, and those types of things, lung infections, lung problems. Um, and the good thing, too, the cool thing is it's a super high source of magnesium, iodine, selenium, calcium. And um, so it's noted for its antiviral properties helps fight mumps and influenza B virus, B viruses, things like that. So Irish moss is super, super important. Um, there's another one called elecampine. How do you say that? E-L-E-C-A-M-P-A-N-E. -E. Um, and it's uh, really traditionally used as a way to cleanse the lungs and help uh, resolve conditions that you know produce really, really high amounts of mucus discharge. Um, so you can look that up if you like. Um, and it's really, really high in beta carotene as well. So something else you want to consider is ginkgo biloba, something that most people have heard about. And, uh, this, this, you know, the medicinal properties of ginkgo just are through the roof. And it's also thought to have beneficial effects on the lungs. Um, and there's a study in 2012 experiment on dogs undergoing, um, hypothermic, uh, cardiopulmonary diseases. Uh, bypass showed ginkgo extract stimulates systemic inflammatory responses in lung tissue. So that's pretty cool, right? Um, some other th herbs you want to look at are slippery elm. And that's thought to be an herb with several medicinal qualities. Uh, most, most notably, it's a really great herb for treating respiratory ailments, slippery elm. Um, and it contains a perfect blend of anti-inflammatory, antiseptic, uh, mucolage, diuretic, uh, emollient, laxative, and uh, 
It's just really, really a powerful herb, slippery elm. So check that out too at your local health food store. Um, and the other one is cult's foot. Uh, known for its healing properties, it's a powerful herb that can be very beneficial to the lungs. It's widely cultivated in Asia and Europe, and it makes an excellent remedy for whooping cough, common colds, and other types of sort of lung conditions that people might have. And uh, so this herb is thought, it's, it's thought to be capable of relieving the symptoms of bronchitis. So uh, Colt's foot, C-O-L-T-S-F-O-O-T. A couple more left. Uh, one is rosemary. Um, just like echinacea, it's a really antimicrobial herb that contains super potent oils, uh, which have antiseptic, antibacterial, antifungal properties. Rosemary, who would have thought, right? It just grows everywhere. Um, and herbal practitioners have used rosemary for alleviating, alleviating colds. They use it for sore throats, for uh, flus, coughs, bronchitis, chest infections. Um, and so one of the com- components of rosemary is a, a component called Carnosol, um, which in 2011 was was evaluated for its anti-lung cancer properties. So um, apparently there's some researchers in Chicago have found that Carnosol uh, possesses a selective toxicity towards cancer cells without destroying uh, non-cancer cells. So it's pretty interesting. Rosemary, who would have thought, right? It grows everywhere. Um, <clears throat> and it's also apparently um, well to- tolerated if you give it to animals. Uh, let's see here, hyssop. Hyssop is known for its anise-like aroma and is a fragrant herb that is well known for its beneficial effects on the lungs. It has been used for thousands of years, hyssop, and it contains an expectorant properties that are thought to eliminate congestion um, caused by sinusitis and other sort of viral infections that happen in our nasal cavities and in our throats and uh, things like that. So um, it's an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory uh, it's a diaphoretic, or it has diaphoretic properties known to it, and it helps reduce fever and rid the body of unwanted toxins. Hyssop is pretty powerful, so you check it out. Um, and some people take it as a syrup, and it's uh, believed to be an effective reliever of stubborn coughs and other pulmonary infections. Um, and way back in ancient times, oddly enough, hyssop uh, was prescribed really to reduce asthma, resolve asthma and stomach aches and you know nasal and... Uh, you know, lung issues. So, you know, hyssop is a powerful, powerful herb. So make sure to check that out at your local health food store. Obviously, there's echinacea, and that treats a wide range of uh, conditions like common colds. And it's also known for stimulating the immune system. Licorice root is another herb that's often used to support respiratory health. Um, So licorice root is really, really important. And it's a super effective in treating respiratory tract infections. So you might want to look at that. And obviously, the big one here is garlic. Um, gosh, garlic has been used for thousands of years uh, in all ancient cultures in treating respiratory issues as well as others. I mean, garlic is huge uh, for helping stimulate the immune system. Um, so, so the compound in garlic uh, is called allicin and um, helps to deliver, you know, it's antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, um, and it's particularly effective in, for treating respiratory issues. So um, there's a brand, uh, let's see, what is it called? Kyolic, I think? And they sell aged garlic extracts. You may want to check that out. Um, and it helps to boost the immune system tremendously. Um, and so another compound you might want to look into for lung health is uh, beta carotene. Obviously, when you think of beta carotene, you think of carrots, uh, sweet potatoes, things like that. But uh, beta carotene is super high in green leafy vegetables. Uh, romaine lettuce, oddly enough, squash. Uh, what are some other uh, foods high in beta carotene? Um, cantaloupe. Uh, red bell peppers. I can't really do red bell peppers myself. I, I don't do well with those. But uh, apricots, uh, you know, I know that's super high in peas and broccoli. So beta carotene, or if you can take a supplement um, to increase your amount of beta carotene, you might want to do that um, to take care of your lungs and to uh, prevent any lung infections from happening. Something that might be um, to consider is to do this kind of stuff maybe at the end of summer, le- leading into fall. Um, and start taking care of your lung and respiratory health. Could be something to, to think about. So let's see. We've got a handful of devices here that I think that you guys really might might really, um, I think it might benefit you. So um, one of them is called the Breath Slim. And the Breath Slim is a product that I was uh, turned on to by Dr. Circus. He was telling me about it one time. And essentially, it's like a little device that you... Um, it's like a portable device and you breathe into it and it helps 
um, it, it basically adds additional resistance to your breathing. So it, it creates, it's like an exercise for your lungs. And so um, as a result of sort of creating this resistance, uh, the lungs have to expand kind of like air balloons. Um, and this allows the body to receive more oxygen. Um, so it's, it's like kind of getting a boost of oxygen when you're doing a training session with this breath slim. Um, and so that helps to, you know, better absorb the fats that we receive with each meal and burn those calories more efficiently and helps to expand, uh, lung tissue and lung capacity to uptake more oxygen. Uh, breast slim is really, really important tool to have, I think, to, to use every couple days to, to sort of do a workout for your, uh, for your lungs. Some other sort of energetic, uh, devices that you may want to look into are Rife machines. Um, we have a Rife machine. We've been using it for a long time. I use it, in fact, when I sit in my sauna and when I lay on my IMRS mat. Um, I really like this thing. I really, really like it. It's, uh, it's been helping tremendously. And I, I don't know. I, there's something to this technology, the Rife machine. And, um, we've had ours for about, gosh, it's been over a year and a half now, probably. And we've had some incredible results. Um, I use it so often, um, almost daily. And they have a bunch of different uh, frequencies on there that you can use. And um, it's really cool because you can, you know, it has body systems on there and has different ailments. And so you can search for whatever your ailment is or whatever ailment that your body currently is, is dealing with. And you can set a frequency for that and just lay down and use it while you're sleeping. Or uh, for me, I, I, I kind of combine it. I, I have it right next to me when I'm doing the Relax Far and Fred Sauna. And then I also do it when I am uh, reading, I'll have it next to me, or I'll, I'll combine it with red light therapy and I use on my IMRS mat. Um, so since we've gotten some such good results, we're going to start selling the Rife machine here pretty soon. Uh, we can't say that it cures anything because we'd be getting in trouble for that. But look into the work of Royal Rife, Royal Raymond Rife. And if you're a listener, a longtime listener to the show, you probably already know who he is and how powerful his work uh, was with cancer back in the day before they shut him down. Um, so what I'll do is I'll lay on my IMRS mat, and that's a PEMF machine, Pulse Electro Electromagnetic Field Therapy, um, and I'll have my Rife machine running right next to me, and I'll be using a red light therapy, and then I'll be listening to an audio book or I'll, I'll watch a documentary. So I'm kind of doing four or five things at once um, over the course of like the 24-minute session on the IMRS mat. So a Rife machine is something you should really look into. Um, the other thing, too, to look into is something called the biophoton analyzer. Now, these are energetic devices um, that work on the level of frequency, much like a Rife machine. So what the Rife machine does is it, it basically produces the counter frequency of any kind of virus, any kind of virus or any kind of um, issue that you have going on in your body. It produces the resonant counter frequency of of that condition that's going on in your body and what happens, much like when a um, an opera singer hits a certain note, a pitch, um, the glass breaks. You've got guys have all seen those commercials. Um, that's much like how a Rife machine works. And so what Royal Rife was doing, Dr. Rife was, I believe, yeah, he was a doctor, I think. Um, he was researching and find, finding what frequency all of these different conditions resonate at and noting these things down and then creating counter frequencies um, that he was plugging into uh, the different Rife machines that he was working on, and he was having unbelievable success. So look into the Rife machine. Um, if you guys want to hold out and wait till uh, we start selling the one the one that we use, you can do that or just search them online. Uh, but the other one is the Biophoton Analyzer. I'll, I'll let you guys look up this stuff. And what that does is it works very, very similar, but it works on an energetic pathway and frequency um, of the body and it, it creates counter frequencies much like the Rife machine, but at a little bit different level. So I'll put a link to a bio photon analyzer. Now these are machines. What's really cool about this kind of stuff is that, you know, you could be working on your lungs, but what you're also doing is that you're working on a level much, much deeper than just a physical. Um, so we all know that we're much more electrical than we are physical. So when you work on something like the lungs, um, you're not just working on the lungs in isolation. See, our culture has everything backwards. Our culture is designed to get us to compartmentalize everything. 
uh, kind of like, you know, if you're working for the government and you're working on some secret mission and the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing, um, it's all designed to keep um, communication from flowing from one department to the next so that they don't know what's and put together the big picture about what's going on. The same thing is happening in conventional allopathic medicine where you have these uh, people that are dialed in like, like specialists in orthopedics and they're working on your knee and then you have a heart doctor, you have a lung doctor. But what these things do is that this is works on a holistic level. So when you're working on your lungs, you're also working on your entire body. Um, that's what the IMRS mat does. It creates this PEMF frequency into your body that works at a resonant level um, to help uh, increase oxygenation and a ton of different things. So, um, you know, that's what really the future of medicine is about is holistic healing. Um, so look into the bio photon analyzer. We don't sell it. We don't sell the rice machine yet either. Um, again, I can't make any claims that these things do anything, but um, I think if you read, but read between the lines and start doing your own research, you can um, really quickly understand how powerful these machines are. So um, the other thing, too, is this training mask. And um, you might want to look into this. And I don't want to say too much about it, but I, I just want to bring it to your awareness and maybe let you guys make the call on this because this is really, it's um, it's a mask that people, like a lot of athletes do this. And you guys probably are familiar with um, training at altitude. So what, what a lot of athletes do, elite athletes, uh, basketball players and things like that, um, is they train at like four or five, 6,000 feet. Um, one of the biggest things when I was a Laker fan growing up in the eighties, when the Lakers would always play the Denver Nuggets, um, the Denver Nuggets, even though they didn't have the best team in the league, they would have the best home record in the league. And the reason is because every other team was playing at sea level. And then when they go and play at, at Denver, they're playing at like 5,000 feet. And the Nuggets were so accustomed to that. Their cardio was so much better than than, than any other team that um, all the other teams that played in their home arena would just simply get tired and gas out in the third quarter. And so uh, that's why the Denver Nuggets, they can sustain that pace because their lungs were acclimated to that um, elevation of about 5,000 feet. So what this training mask does is it mimics that sort of environment. So what happens is that you put this mask on, and I think you can adjust it from anywhere from uh, 2,000 uh, feet elevation all the way up to 10,000 feet, I think. And it's a breathing mask. And a lot of people use it to exercise, um, like marathon runners and people that are like MMA fighters and people like that. Uh, they wear this because it helps to mimic and train their lungs to be able to uh, work optimally at um, super high altitude. So I'm not saying that... Um, you should do this. I'm saying look into it and uh, check with your doctor. But um, this is something that if I had lung issues, um, I would definitely look into this. You know, it's a really, really interesting thing. And there's also devices too. You should look into this as well that other MMA fighters are, are now doing, um, which is basically like putting a tent over your bed that also does the same thing. And so what happens is you put this tent, I think you zip it up. Um, you may want to look into this, but it's just good to know there's options, right? So there's a tent that you can put around your bed that mimics this type of um, environment. So you can put it, set it to like 4,000 feet, and that way you're sleeping at that altitude. And so that could help to um, to increase your lung capacity and train and strengthen your lungs to be able to um, you know, take in the oxygen at, at that higher level. And then when you take those devices off or get out of them, um, your, your lungs are much, much stronger and more robust. So again, I'm not advocating this. I'm just making you aware of this type of thing. And then what you should probably do is run some of these ideas by your naturopathic doctor. Um, a medical doctor probably never heard of these things or read the studies or anything like that. But these are some ideas you can run past your uh, natural doctor and see what he thinks of these. And another device you might want to look into is it's actually not a device. I think they have some in-home units, but that's basically the hyperbaric chamber, oxygen chamber, and that is um, increasing the amount of oxygen that you can uptake into your body, into your red blood cells, uh, and thereby into your lungs um, that helps improve lung function and things like that. So if you have a local uh, sort of, I don't know, a, um, location near you, that would offer um, hyperbaric oxygen chambers. I know that they also offer some of these chambers for indoor use. Um, you know who was working on right now? I think there's one or two companies. I forget what the name of the company is, 
but they're they're pretty expensive. They're like fifteen thousand bucks. But uh, a doctor that I was a friend of our shows, um, Doctor Dan Angles, was on our sh- was on our show recently, and um, Doctor Dan. I think you spell his name E N G E E N G L E S. I think um, we have another friend that's been on the show, Doctor Darren Ingles, I N G E L S. I think so. I get their spellings mixed up, but Doctor Dan Ingles is working on um, developing a more cost-effective at-home hyperbaric oxygen chamber. So, um, or hyperbaric oxygen, yeah, uh, chamber. So you may want to look at that as well, um, and, and maybe talk to him about how that affects the lungs. So those are some devices that you can take a look at. Um, there's some of them are expensive. The Breast Slim is probably the cheapest one. The Rife machine, I think, is a few thousand bucks. The Biophoton Analyzer, I think that's around, gosh, I think that's around two or three, four thousand bucks, something like that. So some some of these things are are quite expensive. Um, but like I've been saying, it's really important just to be aware that solutions exist, right? So some of these may not be um, that effective for you. Some of them may be extremely effective for you. Some, um, you know, may not work at all, but the point is to learn about things and then do your own research and see if they can help you. And that's where the power of natural healing is, is that doctors typically medical, medically minded doctors typically will give you a couple different options. Um, as far as a cause, they really don't know what causes these things. And in terms of the options, most of them are pharmaceutical medications and, and, uh, toxic drugs that are going to be damaging to your immune system. So they got like a couple things that might help you, um, but then damage you in other areas of your life and health. And then on the natural side, you just have thing after thing after thing that um, you can research and learn. And if you combine, you know, option three, four, and five might work for you and six, seven, and eight might work for somebody else. And uh, three, four, and five may not work for that second person, but, you know, seven, six, and two work for the third person. And so the point is to understand that these things exist and there's so many more options that we know about. Man, you really can change the course of your life and your health and cleanse your lungs. You have so many options on the natural side. So that's what's so encouraging. You know, David Wolf says, uh, he quotes the famous line, uh, we live in the best of times and we live in the worst of times. And so it's true. These days, we're dumping, Alaska is, is dumping 834 million pounds of toxic chemicals in the environment every year and you know hundreds of thousands of pounds of toxic metals are being released in the state of texas just in the air not counting the land every single year Um, so the air quality is super super toxic but with that said there's so many different choices there's so many different options that we can do to help cleanse our lungs and i highly recommend that you make clearing and cleaning your lungs and detoxifying your lungs a part of your strategy Because like the stats I showed you, I mean, hundreds of thousands of people are dying every year from lung cancer, and that's not counting lung infections, COPD, asthma, um, all kinds of different things going on with the lungs. If you you count all of the other diseases related to the lungs and add them all up, it's got to be the number one killer. So just because we live in a healthy or we live a healthy way doesn't mean that we're not constantly being exposed from geoengineering, chemtrails, whether or not you believe in chemtrails. Whatever it is, it's it's some sort of toxic thing that's in the sky dropping down on us. Uh, and then you, if you live next to an airport, you have um, incredible amounts of toxicity coming off the airplanes, not just the fuel, but the tire dust from freeways and airplane. Um, and that's not counting smog in the big cities. So we're being really bombarded in our modern life. Um, and so it's super, super important to take care of our lungs. And so let me just share with you uh, some a few lifestyle practices, um, a lifestyle factor, and some emotional spiritual issues related to the lungs um, on a uh, recall healing perspective. And I'll explain what that is if you're unfamiliar with that. But just on a physical level, uh, some practices are leafy green vegetables, green leafy vegetables. They they are what emit <clears throat> all of the great like like those plants I was talking about earlier. It's the leaves of the plants that help respirate the plant and help keep the plant alive. And it's those same leaves when you juice them help your lungs. And so it's like the doctrine of signatures. And so green leafy vegetables, whether you blend them up in a ju- in a smoothie, uh, which I highly recommend because you get the fiber as well, or you juice them or you take a green powder. I would recommend doing all three if you can, if you have lung issues. 
uh, green leafy vegetables, eating them, blending them, taking a green powder and making a green juice. Um, there's some most incredible foods for your health. So make sure to do your green juice every single day if you can, or at least make it your goal. Here's a, here's a good goal. Make it your goal to at least do one green thing a day, whether that's, like I said, a green smoothie, uh, a green juice or a green powder. Um, just make sure to do your greens every day. This morning I had a, a um, uh, what do you call it? A wheatgrass shot and um, incredibly important. And uh, tonight I'm going to have some broccoli sprouts, which are really, really helpful. Um, okay. So make sure to do your green juices every single day. If you can leafy vegetables, um, make sure to eat your salads. Um, incredibly helpful for the lungs. And there is something that I recommend, uh, called the lung cleanse. It's called Allertrex is the name of the product. And I, I do this a couple times a year and it's put out by our good friend, uh, Dr. Ed Group over at Global Healing Center. And this is a lung cleanse. If you go over to his site, you can learn more. Actually, we, we have it in our store. Uh, we're affiliated with him. So if you guys purchase any products from Global Healing Center, um, man, they got some good stuff over there. They got some really, really high quality stuff over there. And I really recommend them um, to everyone who asks. And we love their lung cleanse. We love all the stuff that they put out. Um, so I'll put a link to our store and then our store will link over to their store. That way, um, if you want to support our show, you can go through our link and that helps support us. But, um, it's called Allertrex and it's a really, really incredible way to detoxify, um, your lungs. And it's something that you can do twice a day. And I usually do it at the end of summer, beginning of, of, uh, fall or, um, mid fall, early winter, um, as the air continues to dry. And, um, and it's a really powerful way to, uh, keep your lungs healthy. Now, this is a really, really important thing that I'm going to share with you right now. And it's something that I do just about every day. And that is nebulizing. Um, and what nebulizing is, is basically, um, blasting a, a, a liquid compound through this very fine mesh. And basically what the result is, is like a mist, but it's not a mist like, um, a, a cor- like a big particles. It's, it's like a, it's like a smoke. It's so fine. It's like a smoke. And typically nebulizers were used back in the day to distribute pharmaceuticals uh, to patients. But what we sort of done in the natural world is hijack that and put natural chem, uh, natural, let's just say natural chemicals, natural, <laughs> national, Nash, I can say that natural substances into the nebulizer. And what I do is I use, if you go into our store, we have, we promote, um, this product called scalar silver and it's a, it's a silver product that's, um, orders of magnitude, much more bioavailable. It uses, uh, it's a silver, uh, but it's ran through, uh, scalar energy and it, it's so much more bioavailable than any other silver out there. So what we do is we purchase that and then we run that through our nebulizer and I, 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 I just, what I do is I have my nebulizer out. It's an Omron portable nebulizer and it's really small. So you can take it with you when you travel in airplanes. Um, I'll put a link to it, um, on the show. We don't make any money from that. Um, I don't think they're on Amazon. I looked before. So I'll just link off to the website where I got it from. And, um, it's really a great machine. So the nebulizer is really small fit. It'll fit in your, uh, purse or something like that. Um, and, What's cool about it is it's battery operated and it's quiet too. So it doesn't make a whole lot of noise and um, it's portable. It runs on batteries. Uh, it, it's just worked perfect for us. And so what I do in the morning is I fill it up with silver, some of the uh, scalar silver from um, Sarabanta's acceler- accelerated health products. And I, I, I put some silver in that and just I have it on the counter. So you can take yours to work or take it with you in the car and I just have it on the counter and, you know, maybe, gosh, anytime I go in the kitchen, maybe five, six, seven times a day, I will, uh, I'll go in there and I'll just breathe three or four deep breaths with the silver. Uh, and that's one of the things I do for my lungs. Um, and you can also, this is something that I did. I haven't done this for a while and I should do this, but if you get a little garlic press, this is what's really powerful. What I do is I, I used to do this. I should, I should start doing it more often now is I would fill it probably three quarters of the way up with silver and I would leave a quarter um, for other substances. And so what I do is I get a little garlic press and put three or four cloves of garlic and just all you need to do is get like three, two, three, four drops 
of garlic off the press and put those drops in the nebulizer mixed with the silver and then it'll it, it'll mist it and you can breathe that into your lungs and talk about whew, talk about a way to make sure your lungs are clean it's antibacterial the benefits of garlic are incredible um, so that's a way of combining garlic and a nebulizer and the nebulizer I think is around 150 bucks uh, the scalar silvers I think might be about 30 bucks but if you nebulize it um, like what I do is sometimes we'll buy two bottles of it uh, they're about 30 bucks each I think and we'll drink one a little bits each day uh, and then we'll use the other one for nebulizing and the one for nebulizing will last if you just use it for nebulizing even if you use it on your whole family it'll last six months um, but the one that you drank, obviously you'll go through that quicker, but man, talk about investing in your health, right? Simple, easy practices you can do. Um, something else that you want to consider doing too is, uh, <clears throat> we've done a couple shows on this, the Buteco breathing method. Um, and that's a, a way of breathing correctly through your nose. So you get all the nitric oxide, you get all the benefits of, um, of breathing through your nose and the benefits of breathing through your nose versus your mouth are it's orders of magnitude better. We were meant to breathe through our nose and not our mouth. Um, so you might want to look at that, uh, listen to that show we did about the Buteco breathing method, um, or just search it on YouTube. Um, and there's also a guy named Wim Hof. I'm sure you guys are familiar with him. He has a series of, uh, breath work exercises that helps him to increase his immune system. Uh, he's an incredible guy. He's known as the ice man. And, um, he's, he's an incredible guy, um, and done incredible, has many, many different world records for, uh, holding his breath, uh, staying in ice cold water, um, incredible guy, but this is all done with breath work and you can do this. Even if you have like, like my mom, she's got a lobe of her lung removed and, uh, you can still do this. Even if you have poor functioning lungs or missing l- lobes of your lung, you can do this, um, and there's also the thing called, um, <clears throat> in yogic breathing, there's something called the breath of fire, and you can look into that. And I would encourage you guys to do start doing some meditation and start doing some breath work, and you'll find that, man, your lungs will improve tremendously um, as a result of that. So you can look up breath of fire um, or the Wim Hof breathing method as well as the Buteco breathing method. Um, and something else you might want to consider doing as well um, that you know a lot of people may not know about is something called EWOT, and that's called exercising with oxygen. And exercising with oxygen is something that you could do. A lot of people do it, uh, people who have whose bodies have cancer. Uh, what they do is they have this an oxygen concentrator, and you can get um, them through Promo Life, which is the company we recommend. I think they're available in our store. Um, there's an oxygen concentrator that we have in our store, and it produces... Um, a certain level of oxygen that you can then um, put into your nostrils and you use this while you do a rebounder. Uh, if you guys are unfamiliar with, with rebounding, I would highly recommend you get into rebounding because that's one of the best longevity exercises and one of the best exercises uh, in general for helping to cleanse and keep the body healthy. It's not going to put muscle on you, um, but I, I do it every single day. I lift weights to put muscle on and to keep my body, you know, keep muscle on my body and fat off, but, um, rebounding is probably the most beneficial exercise you could ever do. Um, in my opinion, because it helps stimulate the lymphatic system, helps keep strong bones, helps you increase circulation. There's so many benefits to rebounding. It's unreal. Um, and so what people do cancer patients is they'll do rebounding, um, with the oxygen concentrators. It's called EWOT exercising with oxygen therapy. And if you want to increase that even further, you could take your rebounder outside, which is what I do, the Bellicon. The Bellicon's in our store as well. Uh, I take it outside, and then you can... I mean, there, there's so many things you could do to increase the benefits of it. So uh, what you can do is, if you really want to take this to new levels, take it outside. That way you're getting fresh air. You're getting vitamin D from the sun. And if you go on to Earthing, we have um, a, an affiliate relationship with earthing.com. And we love their products. We have their products. Uh, but this is something that just occurred to me the other day. Uh, we have their grounded bed sheets that we use, but I just realized, you know what I should do while I'm rebounding? You can get a little um, attachment from earthing.com. If you go through our store, you'll see it, uh, and it will put a stake into the ground, and there'll be a cord or a wire, a silver-based wire that will run from the stake that's in the ground, 
and you can um, wrap that around your ankle or anything like that. So you could be grounded while you're rebounding, while you're getting vitamin D, while you're getting fresh air, and while you're doing exercising with oxygen. So there's like, you know, if you're going to be rebounding anyway, why not do those other things as well? So, um, and rebounding itself is really beneficial for your lungs as well. So, and obviously some of the lifestyle factors that you want to avoid are obviously the big one is smoking. Um, you want to avoid smoking. Smoking, oh man, the amount of chemicals in a cigarette, especially uh, secondhand smoke, it's, it's, um, it's order of, orders of magnitude so much worse uh, than just breathing the regular air inside your house, in my opinion. Um, so obviously, you want to stop smoking if you possibly can. Now, on the emotional, spiritual side, see, a lot of times people talk about you know the physical things they can do. And like, here's the five top 10 remedies, or here's the five things you can do. You can use essential oils. You can use um, you know um, homeopathic remedies and take vitamins and supplements and all these types of things, which are great. And there are vitamins and supplements out there uh, that help, you know, increase oxygenation and things like that. But in my opinion, this is just my opinion, take it for what it's worth. All disease is a spiritual, emotional disease, all of it. Um, it all has its roots in the spiritual, emotional realm. And so when you only, when, when you have the idea of attacking a virus or attacking a symptom or you know, combating something. Um, the old saying goes, what you resist persists. And the reason why that's showing up is because of some underlying emotional, spiritual, invisible process that we don't have any idea uh, why these things happen. But in my opinion, the root, root, root cause of all disease, of lung issues, of cancers, of all kinds of things is getting in touch with the emotional, spiritual side of things. And on... Let me just read to you, because this is something that I feel like gets missed in a lot of sort of home remedy sites and a lot of different, um, you know, doctors and people is they, is they miss the emotional, spiritual side of this kind of stuff. And I have this really great book here called Recall Healing the Pyramid of Health um, by a guy that was on our website, uh, Dr. Gilbert Renaud. Um, that's how you say his name, I think. Or what do you say? uh I forget how you say his name in, in French, but uh, he was on our show and he he's put together this thing called uh, Recall Healing the Pyramid of Health. And he talks about some of the spiritual emotional issues that um, underlie uh, the physical symptoms we know as disease. And so uh, here he says here, the, the lungs comprise the alveoli and the glands of the mucous membrane of the bronchial tubes. This especially involves the oxygen and distribution function and that which characterizes the lung which is adapt which is its adaptability um <clears throat> so here he says i'll just read you a little paragraph here it's pretty interesting uh, if you have lung issues this will be really really interesting to you 100 years ago or more uh in order to determine whether or not someone was dead one held a mirror before his mouth if no vapor appeared the person was declared dead and a reference to respiration refers to pulmonary alveoli and oxygen if oxygen no longer enters me i'm going to die the structure which allows oxygen to enter is the pulmonary alveoli and, and in order to breathe more i need more pulmonary uh, alveoli i multiply them for a greater respiratory function the solution of the brain is to provide more high performance alveoli tissue and a mutation of multiplication of the alveoli cells to capture more oxygen so what he says here is it's a conflict of the fear of death, an archaic fear of suffocating, a visceral fear, an archaic fear of dying, of no longer being able to breathe because air constitutes the morsels of life. It also represents the last breath, basically the fear of losing oneself in terms of one, one's own territory. I have to get a hold of what is positive, oxygen, life, or eliminate the negative carbon dioxide, smoke, and death. So it says here, as an example, I'm looking for a way out. The facilitator has to find out where dying would be for the client a solution. Most of the time it concerns a safety issue, a safety issue where the client needs to be secured. Um, it says here, fear for myself because of several spots on the lungs. Fear for somebody else a single spot on the lung. 
a fear of suffering while dying, which represent themselves as several large spots on the upper lung, small spots on the lower lung. So here's an example. A man is diagnosed with prostate cancer. He is terrified and tries to shoot himself, but his wife stops him. A month after, over 20 cancerous nodules are found in his lungs. He learns about Dr. Hammer's work and resolves the conflicts. He becomes ill in bed with bronchitis for six weeks. He gets x-rays again and the cancers are all gone. And the main core conflict is the fear of death because it cuts off my breath. It sucks the air out of me and I, and I have no way out. So there's definitely a deeper spiritual connection, correlation, in my opinion, causation of some of these things related to lung health. So you may want to look at some of these things. And some places you may want to look um, are the survival guilt. Like if you're in a situation where both, you know, you were in a car accident with a friend of yours or a family member and you lived but they died, you could have survival guilt and this could show up in the lungs. So some solutions you might want to look into are recall healing on this emotional energetic level as well as something called gestalt therapy or family constellation therapy. Uh, and this one I was just reading from you or for you was called recall healing. So you can look up gestalt therapy, family constellation therapy, or recall healing to look further into the relationship between um, our lungs, our life, and um, how these things correlate to the physical manifestations of uh, lung issues. So what you may want to do is, um, obviously, there's different levels to these things. So you may want to work on the emotional, spiritual, um, the physical level, all of these different levels. Um, and... Offer your body something other than toxins and chemicals. That's the moral of the story. So you just give it a different offer, right? Um, and understand that um, your body is smart and your body is incredibly powerful and um, immeasurably uh, powerful. And so it knows what it's doing. So if you look into the spiritual emotional side of things, People think the cancer is a disease and you have to attack and kill it instead of making a relationship with it, understanding its role in the larger course of, of who you are in your life and learning to love it, develop a relationship with it, and offer it something else in order for it to gracefully exit your body. And that's the thing that's going on with uh, recall healing. And so it works on these deeper, deeper levels. And at the same time, you can work on the physical level as well. So you can start doing all of these different practices, the breathing. So let me go through just as a recap of the show and uh, just tell you a little bit about what we talked about. So in terms of protection, um, there are different things you can do, like get an air purifier, and we recommend the Air Doctor Pro, which is in our store, as well as getting uh, a lot of different types of plants. And I'll put a link to an article on our site that lists all the different types of plants that, that you can get, um, as well as getting a, a personal air um, what do you call that? Like a, not a purifier, but a mask that you can get if you want to, uh, go traveling or protect yourself, um, from chemicals in the environment. Let's, you know, in your life. And then some of the internal remedies, the herbs are vitamin E, uh, biotherapeutic drainage and homeopathic remedies. Um, some of the herbs are mullein, oregano, peppermint oil, lungwort, eucalyptus, Irish moss, and this one is hard to say, L-acampamine, ginkgo biloba, slippery elm, colt's foot, rosemary, hyssop, echinacea, garlic, and some of the foods that are super high in beta carotene are sweet potato, carrots, dark leafy green vegetables, romaine lettuce, squash, cantaloupe, uh, red bell peppers, dried apricots, peas, and broccoli. And some of the devices that we talked about are the breath slim, which helps to improve lung function is like a internal lung exercise. Uh, the Rife machine, the biophoton analyzer, and that training mask that helps you uh, train at higher altitudes. And some of the lifestyle practices that we talked about are green leafy vegetables, getting your greens in, uh, doing the Allertrex Lung Cleanse from Global Healing Center, which is available in our store, 
uh, nebulizing the silver, the um, scalar silver that we offer in our store with the uh, Omron personal nebulizer, uh, using garlic in that as well if, if you can. Uh, the Buteco breathing method as well as the Wim Hof breathing method. Um, the exercising with oxygen therapy. And right after I'm doing, I'm done recording this, I'm going to go out in my backyard and get and do my rebounder. Um, let's see what else. Uh, obviously smoking. Um, and then looking at the spiritual emotional issues, which is the fear of dying, which is closely related to, to pneumonia um, or survival, survival guilt that we talked about. And gestalt therapy, family constellation therapy, and recall healing. So those are some things that you can look at in terms of lung health and how you can support your lungs and stay healthy and not get lung disease or anything like that um, if you have any issues. So there's so many different things you can do for your lung health. And I encourage you guys to explore some of these things. If you like them, uh, you know, maybe two or three will work best for you. But just start working on reducing the amount of toxicities in your home, um, getting an organic bed. We have a great organic bed that we recommend in our store, bringing some uh, plants into your into your home, reducing the, uh, the the chemicals you're exposed to, the cleaning products, all that kind of stuff inside your home, spending more time outside, all that kind of stuff. Um, keeping your lung health is super, super important, I'm telling you, and it's really, really important because it's a high, one of the main reasons why people die is because of lung issues and um, asthma and... Uh, different types of lung cancers and infections and things like that. So hope you guys enjoyed the show. A lot of, uh, a lot of stuff that I threw out there for you. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you want to grab any, any of the links that we mentioned on today's show, it will be extremehealthradio.com slash, let me make, I think it's 557. Let me see. Extremehealthradio.com slash 557. That's right. Um, and if you're on YouTube listening to this, uh, please make sure to subscribe, share it with your friends, like, and comment below. We appreciate that a lot. Um, and, uh, we, we appreciate you guys so much. Uh, I just want to let you guys know too, we've got a really great, um, thing project we're working on with Dr. John Bergman. Super, super excited. So, um, what I'm really focused on is, is practical solutions to our health problems. And we're partnering with Dr. John Bergman on a membership website where all of our, knowledge and resources. If you like what you heard today, we're going to be going, this is just scratching the surface of what we're going to be sharing inside the community. And we have so many different people in our community. It's incredible. Uh, people that write in, people that are very, very similar. And Kate and I will talk to each other and say, you know what? I wish so-and-so knew so-and-so. They would be like best friends. Um, and so we're going to be developing a community in there. It's going to be launching January. I think it's January 23rd, 2018. Um, and we're going to be having a 21-day challenge leading up to that. There's going to be prizes, all kinds of cool stuff. So um, if you guys are interested in taking this further, um, I would highly recommend, this is going. To, this is something that's never been done before at this level um, in the natural health and natural healing community. So what we're going to be offering there are monthly Q&A calls with the doctor. We're going to be working with other doctors to do private mastermind workshops that exclusively for the members of that community, diving super, super deep with really practical information and tips and advice um, on different types of issues. I'm going to be doing sort of like little mini lectures called Quick Wins um, inside the community. Dr. Bergman's going to be doing Q&A calls, masterminds once a month to answer all of your health questions. There's going to be a community in there. He's going to be releasing um, a course every single month. It's going to dive deep into all kinds of different issues. Um, so what we're kind of divided them into is like there's all of the organ systems of the body, like I talked today about the lungs, uh, but then there's also disease and processes, stuff like that. So if you currently have a disease, if your body does, I should say, uh, we're going to be talking about how to overcome specific diseases, but then we're also going to be doing in-depth courses on how to take care of your lungs, for example, um, how to take care of your brain, how to prevent Alzheimer's, how to prevent cancer. Um, so there's going to be different organ systems of the body, the lungs, the liver. We're going to go through every single organ system. It's going to take a long time because you know, we're just going to be releasing one per month. But man, it's going to be amazing. And Dr. Bergman has already recorded the very first course. And this thing is, man, the level of this course is so professional. It's awesome. I can't wait for you guys to check it out. So we're going to be offering that. Um, we're going to kick around the idea of doing like a group cleanse as a, um, as a community. So we'll be going through like a different cleanse, maybe four times a year with a change of the season. Uh, focusing on doing a cleanse together. Uh, we're going to have workshops. We're going to have webinars. It's going to be, it's going to be 
I think the best natural health community in the world, um, and, and, and the level and the different levels that we're going to hit, um, everything on, it's just going to be unparalleled information on every different level, spiritual, emotional, physical, energetic, all the different things, environmental. So we'll be covering all of that stuff every single month. And, um, if you get in on the ground floor and become like a founding member, you're going to get the cheapest price that it will ever be. Cause over time it's going to increase. But if you sign up early, um, actually, if you go to extremehealthacademy.com, you'll be able to sign up right now and we'll let you know about the challenge too. The challenge is going to be really cool. Uh, we're going to be going through a 21 day challenge, all of us together, and we'll be selecting three different winners to win different prizes. That's going to be happening on January 1st. So if you want to in on all this stuff, I'd recommend going to Extreme Health Challenge. I'm sorry, Extreme, Extreme Health Academy. dot com, and then we'll let you know when the challenge starts. Uh, we'll let you know when the academy opens and when all the webinars are and all that good stuff. So, uh, Dr. Bergman is one of the most popular natural health doctors, chiropractors in the world, and um, you know he's amazing. So we're super excited to be partnering with him and his son to be producing all this amazing content for you. So that's why we do all, all what we do. You know, a lot of the times on our show, it's really challenging because we get, we hit things on a re- really general level. Um, but to really get the practical information, okay, how much of like those herbs that I talked about, where do you get these herbs? How do you work with them? You know, um, do you make teas out of them? How often do you drink it? How much of the tea do you drink? Where do you buy them? Um, how often do you do them all? You know, can you combine them with this, that, or the other? These are all questions that are going to be answered inside the community. So, man, I can't tell you how excited I am. So this is going to be a really cool place. Um, but it's only really there for people that are super interested, um, are higher level of listeners. So if that's not you, then it won't be interesting to you. But if you want to, like for me, I want to live till I'm 150, 200 years old at least. That's my goal. And so I have to start introducing practices into my life spiritual, emotional, physical practices that are going to help me get there. And in order to do that, I, I have to learn and it starts with education. So, um, but then if you also, if your body's currently dealing with any kind of health condition, um, you're going to find the support, um, there. And the cool thing too, is that we're going to be polling all of you guys and we're all going to be able to vote on what course we want to do next. So, you know, we'll, we'll ask you what course do you want to see next? And then, then we'll create that course. And so, um, it's very much a project that's sort of tailored toward all of our health and uh, voting and um, a democratic thing. And so we're super excited about it. And uh, we're really excited to going deep and uh, giving you guys the health, the practical health tips and the solutions and the answers and all that kind of good stuff to uh, to really become healthier. So um, there's a link to that at the top of our website, extremehealthradio.com for the academy. Um, so if you guys want to check it out there. But what I'll do is I'll put links to to everything we, t- we talked about on today's show at extremehealthradio.com. All you got to do is remember slash 557, 557. And I'll put a link to the Academy as well as a bunch of this different stuff we talked about today too. So the health slim and all that kind of good stuff. So anyway, I want to thank you guys for your support. In the meantime, uh, since we haven't launched that yet, you guys have been so faithful and so great supporting us um, on Patreon, on PayPal, sending two, three, five, ten bucks a month. You guys know who you are. Thank you guys so much for that. I also want to thank you guys for visiting our store on a regular basis and purchasing um, any of the items from our store. That really helps us continue our work and supporting us in that way. And then um, for those of you who support us on Amazon, um, we thank you for that too. Come Christmas time and Black Friday, things like that. So anytime you remember to go through our Amazon link, that helps to support us. We don't see what you buy, but we we definitely get a commission and that helps to uh, pay all the bills and all that kind of good stuff. And keep doing and providing these shows for you. So uh, we appreciate that so much. I can't tell you how much it means to us. So we really appreciate that. Um, and then for those of you that just simply share our stuff on Facebook and share our show with your friends, just had a listener today asking about a particular share, uh, show they wanted to share with one of their family members. So man, that, that helps. That helps a lot. Um, and just giving people the practical options and letting them be able to understand that there are options out there for um, increasing our health. And one other thing I want to let you guys know too, I recently been working on my, my own little website, justinstellman.com. I'll put a link in the show notes if you guys want to check that out. Um, I go over there and I blog about personal development, spirituality, and then I'm doing little podcasts over there. Uh, it's definitely a side project right now 
because my main focus is this academy and serving you guys. And so I don't get a chance to write there very often, but I've got, you know, 20, 30 articles on there. Uh, I've transcribed everything to YouTube so you can listen to the articles. I've done a handful of podcasts. Um, so if you guys are interested in that kind of stuff, I explore issues outside of health, mainly spiritual, emotional issues as well as personal development issues. And then I look into on the podcast, uh, just getting into all kinds of other topics like, oh gosh, um, cryptocurrencies, um, alternative views of history, um, all kinds of really interesting, um, things. And so it, if you guys want to go check that out, justinstellman.com, I have a list of all the different other podcasts that I listen to that are uh, business related, personal development related, and then any any um, documentary I watch. A ton of people have been emailing in lately, like what documentaries do I watch? And um, so I, I list them all on justinstellman.com. And so there's about five pages of, do- of documentaries that I've, I've watched um, mostly while sitting in my sauna and rebounding. Um, that's what I, I, I get to watch those things. So it's really cool to be able to combine the practices like that. That way you're doing like four things at once you're learning, but you're also, um, you know, doing your health practice too. So, um, check out justinstelman.com if you guys want, if you guys are interested in that kind of alternative information, because just like in the health world, we've been lied to on every level. So make sure to check out that site. And, um, uh, I'm going to be adding some more, more podcasts, uh, very soon. But like I said before, my, fr- my love, and my first and foremost is to um, serve you guys and create this academy. And um, that's where all my time is, is dedicated. And if I have a little bit of extra time, I work on that. So there's some good content for you, though, if you guys want to check that out. JustinStelman.com and all of the links are available um, of, that I talked about today at ExtremeHealthRadio.com slash 557. Thank you guys so much. We love you. I got to go outside. I got to go do my rebounder. And get some sunshine. It's about 3 o'clock in the afternoon on this Friday afternoon. And um, I need to get some vitamin D. So enjoying the pups outside, Charlie and Coco. So uh, love you guys. Appreciate you so much. Thank you for your continued listenership. And I'm going to be doing more shows like this. Kate and I are going to be doing another show here pretty soon. Uh, we, we, we like to do our free-for-all Fridays. But um, I'm going to be doing shows like this, diving into solutions for our health. So if you guys like it, let me know. And I'll keep doing more of them. All right. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye. No material on this blog is intended to suggest that you should not seek professional medical care. Always work with qualified medical professionals, even if you educate yourself in the field of live food, nutrition, and alternative medicine. I'm not a doctor, nor am I offering readers medical advice of any kind. None of the information offered here should be interpreted as a diagnosis of any disease, nor an attempt to treat or prevent any disease or condition. While information in this blog is discussed in the context of numerous conditions, it can be dangerous to take action based on any information in this blog.